everyone. Welcome to Monthly Metrics, the Wikimedia Foundation. I'm Abby Ripstra, and I'm a design researcher here, a lead design researcher. And I've done a bunch of research, traveled a lot of the world, and learned what people need to contribute to knowledge and to learn from the free knowledge that we all support and love. Um, so I'm your host today, and we're going to have a great presentation with um, there's going to be a movement update, some information about Wikisite, um, uh, about the future of this meeting, um, and then a strategy update from Catherine. And then we'll have some questions and discussion at the end, about 10 minutes, and then time for Wikilove to share appreciation for movement in the people. Um, and Hi, it's Shivani. Hello. Oh, okay. Um, where was I? Uh, yeah. So okay. So if you have questions, just wait for the end to that. Write them down, or and uh, then people will answer questions at the end. All right. So next slide. Um, yeah, these are the things we're going to talk about. <laughs> I just wrote. Um, okay. So on to a movement update. So um, there's now a community capacities map, which is very exciting. CE launched. What? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Here, you can read it too. Um, uh, uh, CE launched a community cap capacities map, an initiative that aims to identify needs and ways to build capacity across the different Wikimedia communities, which is great. Um, also, the audiences department uh, launched visual diffs, um, that, well, the editing team. Uh, it's a new update that will allow users to visually review the changes made to Wikimedia sites without using wiki text markup language. Makes it a lot easier to see what happened. Um, and the annual report was launched. It's beautiful. Thanks for the work uh, for the departments across the foundation that created that. It's very engaging. I really urge you to check it out. Um, and then we had all hands. Uh, 277 people and one puppy participated in all hands. And it was awesome. It was really fun. Next slide. Um, and then here are some things coming up in March. We have Wiki and Daba. Uh, we have Wiki and Daba in Tunis in March 16th through 18th. Uh, Wiki and Daba is a regional conference for Africans, both within Africa and in the diaspora. This year's conference aims to build capacity for African Wikimedians, foster growth on the coverage and involvement of Africa in the Wikimedia projects, and better connect African Wikimedians. Um, and we have International Women's Day coming up on March 8th. Um, two affiliates, Wikimedia Sweden and Wikimedia France, are coordinating gl global campaigns to improve content about women on Wikipedia. Learn more about how you can get involved on these links this will be posted on Meta. And art and feminism. Global events will take place from February through, through the spring as part of an annual campaign to improve coverage of uh, cis and transgender women, feminism, and the arts on Wikipedia. So those are the things coming up in March. All good stuff. OK, now I'd like to introduce you to Dario Toraborelli, who you probably know. <laughs> and he's going <laughs> to talk about Wikisite. Hello, everybody. I'm Daria with the Wikimedia Foundation's research team, and I'm going to give you a long overdue update on Wikisite. I need a clicker. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Thank you, Abby. All right. So many of us are used to thinking of Wikipedia as a destination, the final stop on a quest for information, the place we go to to look up a fact, to um, learn on any topic, to uh, settle a bet uh, among friends. However, for many of its readers, Wikipedia actually is a gateway. Um, it's a gateway to knowledge representing external knowledge repositories um, in library collections, in uh, uh, digital repositories that are outside uh, of our websites. We have extensive evi evidence uh, uh, from the scientific literature that Wikipedia acts as a bridge between uh, uh, what we have on our, on our own contents um, and these are repositories by connecting students, patients, researchers, the general public, uh, to this much broader ecosystem of knowledge. And 
If we look at the role of Wikimedia projects from this perspective, if we ask ourselves what it means to be uh, providing knowledge as a service, the link, the reference, stands out as the most fundamental mechanism by which uh, we can act as a gateway towards a, a much broader ecosystem of knowledge. In other words, the mission of disseminating uh, open knowledge globally and effectively goes beyond hosting content. It really means pointing readers and learners to whatever sources they need in order to be able to meet their learning goals. And so for this reason, linking and referencing is really a critical part of this mission. As it turns out, though, references and links to external sources haven't really received a ton of love <laughs> in the past decade or so. Um, if you're familiar with how references are stored in Wikipedia, uh, you'll be familiar with, with these citation templates, which really don't allow us to reuse um, information about sources, analyze this information, discussing it, and collaboratively curating this information pretty much in the same way as uh, we do this with content. And uh, about two years ago, uh, we started an initiative called Wikisite, uh, whose goal was to try and address this problem. Since 2005, there have been countless proposals under the same name uh, to try and improve the way in which information about sources is stored uh, um, in Wikimedia projects. In 2016, uh, a group of community members uh, supported by WMF picked up this vision of building a collaborative repository of sources to serve the sum of all human knowledge by leveraging Wikidata at its, as its key infrastructure. The goal of Wikisite is to treat citations as a, a first-class citizens uh, in Wikimedia projects by creating a Wikidata entry about every single source that's cited across a Wikimedia projects. The outcome of this is to have uh, new workflows that allow us to facilitate the way in which uh, our volunteer communities discuss, analyze, curate, vet, and reuse information about sources across all of our projects. So um, we started working towards this vision in 2016 with a fairly uh, small group of people. Uh, we didn't really know what we were about to do back then. Uh, and in 2017, we hosted a, a much larger event, three-day event in Vienna. We convened about 100 attendees from 22 countries. We had 16 formal com uh, conference presentations. We had 17 summit sessions, 38 lightning talks, 20 hackathon demos. And it's fair to say that um, what this community has produced exceeded by far our expectations. So today I'd like to share with you um, my personal selection of highlights. There's much more um, that, that this community has produced than what I'm going to present today. Um, but these are some of the key highlights that I'm, I'm pretty excited about. So first off, not many of you may know that as of today, one out of three items in Wikidata, 33% of Wikidata, represents bibliographic metadata about sources, books, news articles, scholarly papers. This is an example of the entry um, on Charles Darwin's um, book on the origin of species. And you can see all the information that Wikidata has uh, about uh, this work. And to give an example of how, what this coverage means in practice, 30% 30, 30 of items in Wikidata are about creative works, right? like books, news articles, scholarly papers. And to give an example about uh, what this coverage means, um, we now have a really large body of curated information about scholarly journals in Wikidata. This is how Wikidata compares with the web of science which represents uh, the largest, most authoritative uh, uh, database about scholarly journals. So we have a, uh, a larger, and I want to say probably higher quality um, body of information about journals than Web of Science does. We have data models uh, made with love and hours of, of wiki labor uh, by our communities uh, to describe a variety of uh, creative works. This is a diagram to represent uh, metadata of books. Um, and their editions. And on top of storing information about sources, we're also growing a graph of links representing citations across sources. Uh, this is all stored in Wikidata. Uh, and so as of today, we have about 36 million citation links that represent how a given source cites another source, um, a resource that up until now didn't exist if not in 
proprietary databases, which is now available to the public uh, under CC0 uh, through Wikidata. And of course, the value of a repository of sources doesn't just come from importing bibliographic data, but also by connecting this information to everything else that exists in Wikidata. So as of today, we have uh, about uh, uh, 1.9 million statements that have been created connecting items about sources to items about their authors. And we have 1.4 million statements that connect uh, these sources to the main topic of a source, which allows you to do something that was impossible up until now, which is filtering and discovering sources as a function of their topic, their author, the gender of the author, the geographic provenance of the author, and so on and so forth. The community has built some really impressive open source applications for exploring this data, such as Scolia uh, or Inventaire. It's an example of the reports that you get from, from Scolia, fully driven by the Wikidata query service, uh, a co-author uh, graph for a scholarly author, location of uh, recipients of a, of a scholarly award. Really rich data can now be surfaced thanks to these applications. And we've also established a network of partner organizations that are helping us connect that everything that exists in Wikimedia projects with this much broader ecosystem of uh, catalogs and digital collections and external repositories of information. These are just a few of the uh, organizations that we've been working with. Also, and most importantly, over the past three years, we've been relying on the generous support uh, of funders and affiliate organizations in the Wikimedia movement, uh, without which none of this would have been possible. Um, we've been presenting on this initiative at pretty much every relevant venue on the planet. Uh, members of the Wikisite community have gone places and given talks and keynotes at more than 20 events in the past two years, including Wikimedia community events, library conferences, GLAM conferences, scholarly publishing events, etc. There is a fantastic series of blog posts and stories on Wikisites and libraries. Um, this is uh, one of my favorite uh, by Katie Mika, um, who is a librarian at the uh, Biodiversity Heritage Library. Uh, and spells out uh, the, um, uh, the role that librarians can play to contribute to this vision. And most importantly, we have a, a, a growing community that's passionate and stubborn about <laughs> represent, representing and very um, um, vocal and, and you could say, um, um, intensely uh, debating data models <laughs> um, on anything that represents sources and helping them cross-link them to the rest of the web. So this is just the beginning of a journey. Um, and I think we have today strong support from many individual contributors in groups and organizations. But to make this vision a reality, we really need a more concerted effort uh, over a longer time frame, a building on the technical partnerships that I mentioned before, and engaging larger parts of the Wikimedia movement. Um, to do so, we have submitted a proposal to our funders to sustain the initiative over a three-year time span. And we hope this is going to be successful. Um, and of course, you can find much more than what I presented today in our annual report um, that we published in December and that I invite you to read. If you wish to join us, uh, we're going to have uh, Wikisite sessions at the Hackathon in Barcelona, uh, at Wikimania. Um, the main event is going to be hosted in the fall at the location still to be uh, identified. Or you can follow us uh, on Meta, on Twitter, and on our mailing list. That's it for Wikisite. Thank you. Thank you, Dario. Remember, there must be questions out there. So if you have them, prepare them for the end for Dario. Um, so next up is Samantha and Greg are going to talk about this meeting going meta. So it's actually that we're talking about this meeting that is it itself going meta. So. Turned out, um, we haven't actually had a conversation about this meeting in quite some time. So we thought that would be an exciting and interesting topic to do. So first off, I'll start with introducing. My name is Greg Varnum. I'm the communications strategist within the communications department. Hi, and I'm Samantha. I go by Sam. I am the comms manager at the comms department. I work a lot on media and public relations. There's probably a good chance that I've bugged you before about <laughs> writing a media response together. So I'll caveat that. But we also get to work on the metrics meetings, too. 
So how do we get to this point? That's a really interesting question. The metrics meeting, actually, this is a great photo, by the way, I love this photo, but it began in October 2008, not as the metrics meeting, but as the report card meeting, and it was actually only for staff in the office. So it was a very limited audience meeting. Over time, it expanded to uh, other staff members, remote staff, and then eventually to members of Internal L, and then eventually to the entire public, leading up to in 2012 when we started to more aggressively do the public aspect of it, actually doing recordings, putting up the page on MetaWiki, uh, and then having the live streaming. So from 2008 to 2012, it was pretty internal focus with some increasing public elements and the transition from the report card meeting, which was literally just going over the same three or four metrics month by month by month and doing kind of a comparison on how we were doing with new editors, how we were doing with the reading rates, how we were doing with edit rates, things like that, uh, to where it evolved to in 2012 to being about our activities as well. So that brings us to 2016, where communications got involved. And I asterisk is, I recognize there was a lot of other stuff that happened in the meeting. This was just sort of the major highlight. So this isn't a detailed review. Awesome. So as Greg said, we started, the comms team started working more closely on these meetings about a year ago. And since then, we have been experimenting with some new changes that we can make to make these meetings more closely aligned and reflective of this incredible movement that we have. Um, we've changed a lot over the years, and so we wanted to think about how the meeting could change to also reflect that as well and make it more engaging for the folks that tune in every month and listen to it. Um, so I'm going to share a couple of highlights of a couple of the changes that we've made in the past year. It's not comprehensive by any means, and then Greg is going to get into some ideas for where we might go in the future and a way to get feedback from you all. So first of all, we made some changes to the meeting format, and we've been able to experiment with that a lot over the past year. Um, we introduced themes for some of the meetings to connect different presentations that related to a similar topic and to create a more cohesive meeting around that topic. Um, we also changed speaking time, speaking slots, so we experimented with other ways that we could divide the hour together with different kinds of speaking formats. So we introduced um, shorter lightning talks, sometimes with slides, sometimes without slides, um, but also more in-depth analysis of projects and tools and work that is happening across the movement. Um, we also tried live translations, thanks to a great idea by Maria Cruz um, for other speaker translations, and also big shout out to Jorge for participating in live translation. Um, we also experimented with guest hosting. For those of you who might have tuned in or watched the meeting after the fact, um, for the January meeting last month, we actually had Wikimedia Deutschland um, host the meeting, and they facilitated and structured the entire meeting, which was actually really cool. Um, and then lastly, we encouraged folks to present on projects or initiatives that were in progress um, or maybe didn't have a clear outcome to report yet, the idea being that they could that folks in our movement could stay updated and involved throughout the process, and that speakers presenting could also gather feedback and ideas um, from folks that were listening that they may not have thought of yet. Another change we made was we introduced more guest speakers. Um, we had more community members join us to present their work, and we invited speakers from institutions in the free knowledge ecosystem to join us. For example, we had someone from OCLC join us and the Met so that we could better understand their priorities, challenges, overlap, and ways that we might be able to collaborate within our own movement. And we started working more closely with speakers and presenters um, to create their presentations. So we talked about things like um, what would be most interesting to this audience, how much context should someone give about their presentation topics, um, how to present findings and lessons learned that other people might be able to use in their own work, and how to use slides as a visual tool to support your points. And we created opportunities to practice and share practical tips and experiences so that folks would feel more comfortable and hopefully want to present again in the future. Um, so these are just a handful of some of the ways that we've been able to experiment with changes to the metrics and activities meetings. And these ideas often came from 
people across the foundation with a lot of support from other staff in the organization and outside the community. Um, big shout out to CE also for supporting us in this. Um, and so now I will pass it back over to Greg to talk a little bit about plans for the upcoming year. So the changes over this last year, uh, which Sam facilitated and did a great job. Let's give Sam a round of applause. She's done a great job with these meetings this last year. A lot of that was based on feedback that we received in communications about people wanting the meeting to be kind of more about the movement instead of just about the foundation. And we're curious about where that's going and where people want to see the meeting evolve in the future. I still run into the phenomenon of if I ask five people what they think metrics is and what they would like it to be, I get 15 different answers, which is an amazing math formula, but that's generally what does happen. So we're trying to kind of move that forward. What is the next evolution of this meeting going to be and how can we make it something for all of you? So those are our questions uh, for this upcoming year. And we're gonna be doing more experimenting. We had somebody, it's probably the biggest question we've received since the January is clearly you guys are experimenting. You did this interesting thing with Deutschland. What other experiments do you have planned? We don't know yet, actually. Actually. We know we're going to experiment. We can commit to that. What they're going to be, we haven't decided yet. Uh, and we'd like some of your help on that. So we've posted three questions that'll be up on MetaWiki. They're already up on MetaWiki, or you can email them us to, right, so you can email your answers to us as well. But they're three simple questions. Why do you attend, watch, or otherwise follow this meeting? Clearly, if you're hearing these questions, you fall into that category in some way, or you have amazing ESP. Uh, the second one is, what do you like about this meeting? Why do you continue to show up? Why do you continue to follow it? And what would you like changed about this meeting? And the third one I think in particular we're very interested in. We'll also be adding on the MetaWiki page a place to sign up for future presentations. We recognize that a lot of times people have ideas and then by the time it comes to scheduling it, they've forgotten their ideas or weren't available anymore. So we want to try to track that a little better and we'll be moving that onto MetaWiki as well. So all of that you can find on the main uh, Wikimedia Foundation metrics and activities page on MetaWiki. That's the main questions from us. So thanks everyone. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. All right. So next up is Catherine, who will talk about a strategy update. Thanks. I think we're running really ahead of time too, right? Okay. Which gives us lots of time for strategy. Um, good morning, everyone, it, or good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, I was asked to come up and give a little bit of an update on what is happening next on strategy. I know everyone here at the foundation is really involved in annual planning, um, but outside of the foundation, folks across our movement have been aware that we would we said last year we were going to go through phase one of the strategic direction process. It was going to wrap up at the end of last year, and then people have been waiting to hear what comes next. So I'm hoping to give a little bit of a background or update on that rather. So the good news is we have a direction. We have a strategic direction. Folks are pretty happy with it overall. Uh, we had a remarkable uh, endorsement process that happened after Wikimania last year in October in which many um, of our movement organizations and individuals in our movement signed up to say, you know, they felt as though this was a, a good direction. This offered us something to work with. They weren't necessarily sure what exactly they were going to do to work with it or how they were going to implement against it, but they were committed to the fact that we had done this, that the process was inclusive, that the direction felt as though it was promising, and that they wanted to sign up for the next phase. So that was pretty cool. Just a re reminder of what the direction actually is. Um, by 2030, Wikimedia will become the essential infrastructure of the ecosystem of free knowledge, and anyone who shares in our vision will be able to join us. I think you heard a little bit about that sort of essential infrastructure of free knowledge component when Dario was speaking just now about Wikisite, for example. Um, I think part, for me, at least, I interpret this as understanding we're already headed in this direction, so how do we embrace what we know we're moving towards so that we can really resource it and sort of be intentional and meaningful around it. And then, of course, anyone who shares our vision will be able to join us. I think this is really core to who we are and our vision statement, so it's just good to sort of state this as a continued principle. We, the Wikimedia contributors, communities, and organizations will continue to advance our world by collecting knowledge that fully represents human diversity and by building the services and structures that enable others to do the same. So again, that's about how do we as a community continue to do what we do, but also making that a little more expansive so that more folks can be a part of our mission. Uh, we'll carry on our mission of developing content and in the past, and of course, we're gonna go further. 
And then knowledge as a service. Uh, to serve our users, we want to be a platform that serves open knowledge to the world across different interfaces and communities. We want to build tools for allies and partners, again, that more expansive understanding, to organize and exchange free knowledge across Wikimedia, and making sure that our infrastructure that we have to do this, whether it's community, our community infrastructure, or whether it's platform infrastructure, will enable us and others to use and collect different forms of free trusted knowledge. And then knowledge equity. As a social movement, we will focus our efforts on the knowledge and communities that have been left out by structures of power and privilege. We will welcome people from every background to build a strong and diverse communities. And we're going to work to try to break down some of the social, political, and technical barriers that have excluded those who haven't been able to join us in the past. So this is uh, what we came to as the direction. Again, sort of the, free, the essential infrastructure of free knowledge. Um, and then thinking about how do we do this in a way that's intentional and aligned with our values. Uh, making thinking about knowledge as something that serves people and thinking about how we increase the equity that or how do we improve knowledge equity and, and sort of deepen the principle of equity in our work so I think the question is how do we get there what does this mean for the work that we do what does this mean for the programmatic efforts that we undertake what does this mean for movement organizations what are the challenges that we might face in being able to achieve this goal before we take that on, I just wanted to stop to highlight what we have today to build on. We have a strategic direction with broad-based support across the movement. We have a lot of resources and research from phase one. Uh, I don't know for those of you who haven't spent the time on it, Wikimedia 2030, 2030.wikimedia.org is a remarkable treasure trove of information, not just about the Wikimedia movement, about, but about the world of knowledge that we live in today. It is really fascinating and I encourage folks to take a look at it but what we would sort of point to is that we had and did all this research which informed the strategic direction and yet there's probably a lot more that we can do to mine that research and all of the conversations that we had to think about what does that mean for the plans that we build how do we understand the world that we're living in um, and really incorporate that into the, the planning that we do across the movement um, a window of opportunity that is wide open right now it was phase one now it's phase two we should get going um, a community, our, the assets that we currently have as a movement, our community, our identity, the strength of our brand, the relationships that we have in the world, and then interest and engagement from different movement groups who are already working to try to contextualize the direction in their own work. So uh, there's some links here that talk about some of the works that other groups are doing already. Which brings us to phase two. So I just want to pause to talk about the big picture. For those of you who are at all hands, you may have seen this already. Um, in last year, we really thought of that as a strategy year, working to try to understand the direction, pull ourselves together, try to orient the movement in one, in sort of a all heading in the same direction. Uh, we're really thinking of this as a transition year, a year for us to understand what are the questions that we need to ask ourselves about how do we implement the direction? How do we understand and contextualize it or apply it to our own work? What are the things that we need to do as movement organizations or as individuals to prepare or align ourselves or wind down things that perhaps are not as aligned? Um, and you know, as we're going into the foundations work for the annual for annual planning, I'll talk a little bit more about what that means for us. And then, I, this is, you know, calendar years are are kind of a construct, right? Like January isn't actually a time which everything rolls over and changes. So to say that 2018 to 2019 is a transition year and 2019 to 2020 is the first year, is really meant to just sort of be an indicator. It's not actually how we see this working in practice. What we understand is that this year is going to roll into starting to really align ourselves with the direction and start doing work against it. But next year will be the first year in which everything that we do from a planning perspective is fully aligned with the direction. So it's not that next year all of a sudden we're being strategic. It's more that next year is the first year in which hopefully everything that we're doing is really has some sort of connection to the strategic direction. So hopefully this year we'll start to see that transition and more and more of our work will be aligned with it. So the work ahead. Um, I recently had the chance to go to Berlin to talk with some of our colleagues at Wikimedia Deutschland, uh, specifically Nicole Eber, who had been working on um, the phase one part with our movement organizations. And we identified some of these questions at different levels of our movement um, around what we need to address in the work ahead. So at every level of the movement, whether that's at the individual level or the project level or the wiki project level, or um, you know, in, in our different communities or in our movement organizations, 
what are the questions that we need to ask ourselves about how we evolve in a healthy way? How do we need to change or adapt? Or what is it that we need to move towards as we move towards this direction of an essential infrastructure for free knowledge? across the movement. And I really think about this as like the places in which we're connected. Um, so the space between ourselves and at the Wikimedia Foundation and folks who are doing work in the GLAM community or the space between the GLAM community and the chapters, for example, or the space between the chapters and the user groups. What are the critical questions that we as a movement need to address uh, around roles, resources, and responsibilities in order to effectively move forward? So one way that we've been talking about this is we have this incredible organic infrastructure that has evolved over time that supports our movement across a variety of different um, geographic regions and languages and sectoral expertise, but it's been really organic. And if we were to stop and take a look today and say, how might we actually structure this in an intentional way to be the most successful that we could be in advancing our mission, what would that look like? And so we want to ask ourselves these questions and think about what, what we need to change or evolve or adapt or just reinforce in order to be successful. And then at the movement organization level, so that's at the level of perhaps a user group or the foundation, you know, how do we apply this? What are the programs that we need to undertake? What are the, what's the work that we need to do in a really practical sense? How does this affect each of our work day to day? Um, what are the first priorities that we need to take on? You know, everything is one step or one foot in front of the other and whatever goals we have 15 years from now may require sort of a first set of actions that we need to undertake in order to get there 15 years into the future. And then for projects and individuals, uh, what are the priorities for the individual Wikimedia projects? What are the sort of the sticking points or the pain points? What do contributors need and care about? Or in other words, the layers that we've been thinking about this are sort of at the conceptual level, the structural level, the programmatic level, and the tactical level. And you can, um, of course, this slide will be available later, but some of the links go into things like at the bottom at the tactical level for our projects and our communities and in individual contributors. Uh, we did a during the consultation last year, we got a lot of feedback about things people would like to see changed in the project or ideas for tools or ideas for sort of product developments. Uh, we put that all into a report and we said, you know, these are really tactical level changes as opposed to strategic level ideas, but they're still really valuable. And so how might we think about implementing them? So this is sort of the different layers of work that we anticipate. And there are gonna be different parties responsible for working on this, depending on what your role is in the movement or how you contribute or what role you play within a movement organization, for example. So what is the scope of phase two? Well, you know, as I said, we want to become the essential infrastructure for free knowledge, but we're many different pieces and groups. We are very complex. We have different strengths. So how do we move forward? And what we're seeing this as is really sort of a split into two different ways of proceeding. The first is for movement organizations and groups like the foundation. You know, we have annual plans and annual budgets and we need to move that forward. And so the first question is how do we as an institution or how do other institutions think about their their work? How do individuals think about their work? How do they move that forward in a really practical sense as they as they seek to contextualize and apply the strategic direction? And the second is about those sort of spaces in between, the infrastructure that I mentioned earlier of the movement as a whole. And we're going to be launching a phase two process around that. Um, and so I'm gonna talk about that a little bit before I talk about what this means for the foundation. So at the movement level with phase two, What's going to be the same? Well, we're probably going to have some sort of process. It, it, we're going to have a core team that is responsible for doing the heavy lifting of keeping things going on time, making sure there's documentation. We're going to assemble working, working groups and advisors from across the movement. Uh, we're going to conduct research. We're going to make sure all that effort is available on Wiki. Uh, we're going to consult broadly across many different languages. And we're going to use Wikimedia Conference and Wikimania as opportunities to consult with our communities, get feedback. And then we're going to have some recommendations at the end to the whole movement. Um, and we're going to see how they're adopted or interpreted. What is going to be different? Well, the Foundation and Wikimedia Deutschland are working together on this. Um, so last year in phase one, we really sort of centralized a lot of the effort um, out of the Foundation just to keep the process moving forward. It was obviously you know, lots of different consultative parties on it, uh, whether it was in the committees working around designing the process or giving feedback on the direction. Many different people from across the movement participated, but nonetheless, most of the work was sort of hosted from within the Foundation. This 
coming phase, we're working with Wikimedia Deutschland to think about how we can distribute some of those responsibilities and really embed this interpretation and these next steps across our movement so it's more broadly owned than just by one centralized body. Uh, the core team will be primarily made up of Wikimedians and people from Wikimedia organizations. So last time we brought in uh, external consultants to help us structure and organize this and they worked really closely with our movement partners and with folks in the foundation. But nonetheless, there's a third party. This time we're really looking to build that team out of our movement so that we can start to deepen the expertise that's involved um, in making this work real uh, and make sure that there's broader ownership. And our efforts will be focused on how we can be successful against making progress against this direction rather than interpreting it or giving it new meaning. Um, and so one of the things we said at the end of phase one when we went through the endorsement process was that we, we kind of have to get alignment on this direction and then we think about how to move it forward rather than, okay, we've got a direction, now let's sort of open it up again for, for reimagining or reinterpretation. So we, we have a lot more clarity and sort of a narrower scope on this. Uh, and we already have some initial areas of exploration from phase one. And so if you go to, again, the site 2030.wikimedia.org, uh, you can find some links on Meta as to what some of those initial areas of exploration might be. So here's some of those initial areas of exploration. Some potential key themes that came up were things like roles, um, governance and structures. How do we live up to the value of equity in our global structures? You know, if, as I said at the beginning, if we were to reinterpret or reimagine or imagine afresh what it would mean to have a global movement structure, what would that look like? So those are some questions we might ask. Resources, so funding and capacities. How do we rethink development, capacity building, learning and events, and revenue models, all of which count as resources, both just in terms of expertise and time, but also you know, financial resources so that they reflect our values of service and equity. And then responsibilities. We've talked a little bit about how increasingly some of um, different parts around the movement have increasing specialization and expertise. You know, how might we tap into that? How might we foster and facilitate that? Uh, certainly, as we've talked about the evolution of the foundation, we know that we're not the experts in everything across our whole movement. And so are there ways that we can support this, um, these emerging um, areas of, of expertise so that they can really strengthen our movement as a whole. You know? um, so those are some of the questions that we'll be asking. Uh, and then you can see the themes and questions will be defined and prioritized in consultation with the movement as a whole. So these are just some examples that came out of what we talked about in phase one. Um, and then the recommendations will be worked on by working groups. Um, I don't have a total definition of the process yet. We're, we really want the core team that we're going to assemble to help us define that process. And here is a bit of a roadmap. Um, it goes through 2020 because the work is never done. Uh, but that, that doesn't mean that we're finally going to be done with the strategic direction or anything in 2020. As I said earlier, you know, some folks are already working on this in their core work as we've been talking about annual planning. I know that there's been conversations around a cross-departmental program here at the foundation on platform evolution that's clearly really aligned with the strategic direction. So this is really just meant to give an indication that you know, we really want to see this as constant interpretation and iteration in order to make sure we're really being effective from a programmatic standpoint. But we see this issue of sort of trust and relationships as being really important, you know, a constant evolution and change process as we move in that direction, research and data around, um, oh, sorry, that's what we have already, roles and responsibilities, then individual level sort of contextualizing the direction at organizations or individual groups, and then the tactical stuff. And what you can see down at the bottom here is that there are going to be different layers of responsibility and support for these different efforts. So some things are going to happen at movement organization or individual levels, some things are going to be led by this core team. Um, before I go into what this means for the foundation, I just wanted to add one last thing. As we've been talking with Wikimedia Deutschland about organizing this core team, we've been defining some of these responsibilities. And for those who are watching either in the foundation or in the movement, uh, what we'd like to do is make the those uh, descriptions of those responsibilities and job descriptions on the core team available. So if you're interested in being a part of that core team, that you can let uh, Nicole or myself know, and we'd really love you to join. Um, so that's just a sort of offer to make it a broad, open process for folks who are interested in being a part of this, this next part of the effort. So phase two. Um, for the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, what does this mean for annual planning? What does this mean for the year to come? As I mentioned, this transition year that we're in. Oops, I want to go to this side first. Uh, the annual plan is meant to 
over the course of the last couple months we've been talking about as we build this annual plan, really making sure that there's time for folks to think about what, what they need to do to start planning for the strategic direction. So the general guidance that we've been giving to sea levels in the organization is try to spend, free up about 20% of your capacity uh, to be able to work on this and start moving things forward. Uh, because we recognize that already at the orga this organization, most people are actually planned to like 120%, which leaves very little slack uh, to take on additional work, let alone react to the things that just happen throughout the course of the year. So we, we've been targeting 20%, which maybe means that people get scheduled to just 100%, but even that would, would really be a significant improvement. Um, and we've also said, like, be more def definitive about what you plan to do in quarters one and two, because that's the near-term future. And give yourself more flexibility in quarters three and four, because as those priorities for the movement uh, or how the strategic direction will be implemented become clearer, we want you to have the flexibility to adapt your work to them. So more clarity around quarters one and two, a little bit a little bit more space to be flexible in quarters three and four, and that's, that's actually okay. We want that flexibility. So I'm gonna go back. Uh, what does this timeline look like? I apologize, I'm not very good at building timelines, kind of ugly. Um, but we are now in Q3, still, we're still in Q3? We're still in Q3, cool. Um, and as you can see, we're really in this process of annual planning right now. Um, as of April 1st, we, we open up the annual plan for community feedback and we get consultation on that. Um, once that is open to the world, I mean, for a lot of folks, the majority of the, the heavy lifting on annual planning is done. Um, so what we want to then do is start training our brains around you know, the first level priorities that we would want to work on as part of the strategic direction. So if we say the essential infrastructure for free knowledge, if we talk about knowledge equity, what are the things that we would need to take on as priorities to address this? And it might be, hey, I really need to do this thing within my own department in order to be ready to even ask these questions. Um, it might be, you know, we really need to draw, address this really sort of sticky question in the platform evolution cross-departmental program. Um, but what we are saying is, you, you know, we're gonna want these priorities sort of the one foot in front of the other as we go into this medium term three to five year plan that we can actually say we're going, we're going to say that these are priorities for the next three to five years and we're going to work on them and we want to be able to put them forward to the community to make sure that they resonate with the community itself. So that's kind of what we see ourselves doing in Q4 so that what we can do is at Wikimania share those priorities with the community for their feedback. And I don't know exactly what those priorities are going to be. I'm don't have great examples of it because I think that that's sort of an emergent process. But we wanna be able to share those first priorities with the community for their feedback at Wikimania and then get consultation on them over the course of the first quarter of next year. And then what we'd like to do is to work to convert those priorities to a medium term plan. So I'm gonna keep using the example of platform evolution because it's kind of already in the works. And that's really talking about, you know, what is the future for um, our media wiki teams and how do we want to think about sort of the next steps for, um, for media wiki and what's that roadmap. And so we could say that, you know, the first priority is that we just want to evolve the platform. And then what we would say is, hey, community, this is our priority. What do you think? We feel like this is the first step over the course of, you know, between now and 2030, we need to really focus on this for the next three to five years. And here's, you know, what we think, we just think this is a priority. Community says, yes, absolutely, that's great. We agree this is a priority. Converting that to a plan would then say, what is the roadmap? What are the milestones? How long is this going to take? How many additional people are we going to need to work on it? Who are the partners that are going to need to be involved? What are the really tricky questions and how do we figure out how to address them one by one? And so that process of converting things to a medium term plan will happen in Q2. And then what we'd really like to have is a three to five year medium term plan that gives us guidance and more continuity so that we have clarity over what we're trying to achieve over a medium term. I think a lot of us at the foundation end up doing work that really focuses on an annual cycle. But again, that annual cycle is sort of an artifice. Some things take six months, some things take nine months, some things take 36 months. And we really want to be able to accommodate for that so we've got more continuity and hopefully make annual planning in the future much easier because you say, hey, we're really working on this thing that we've already been planning for for, for some time. And that's it, I guess, right? So the three to five year term plan. Um, and then of course, planning starts again with annual planning, which we're hoping to really make more about budgeting. Um, and you can just sort of see where these sort of critical points along like movement collaborations or um, moments in the movement around Wikimedia Conference or Wikimania or the like. I think that is it. Uh, are we at time? We're at time.
Perfect. I was just going to say, you've seen these goals really quickly for this transition year. We really want to focus on knowledge, equity, growing new contributors and content. So if you've been working on your annual plan, you know that growing new contributors and content is a priority. Knowledge as a service, increasing reach in audiences, and investing in foundational strength, so evolving our systems and structures. And that is it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. So now it's time for questions and discussion. Um, so you can come up to the mic over here. There's James is managing the IR, any IRC questions. Anything on IRC yet, James? Hi, I've got a question from Subu for Dario, um, which he may have already read. Spoilers. Um, uh, does the wiki data set cover everything in the Journal of Science set? And uh, as for the rest of Wikidata, are they a gap in the Journal of Science set, or are they not quality sources? Yeah, so it's a great question. So the, the data on Wikidata uh, aims to cover, as a very first uh, goal, um, what's cited across Wikimedia projects. And there are major gaps even in that. Books stands out as a, as a really complex um, problem to tame because of uh, complexity in the data model. Um, when it comes to the uh, the scholarly uh, literature, uh, the coverage is actually pretty good. There are also data sets uh, on Wikidata that go beyond what's already um, in Wikimedia projects. Um, so the the coverage, the comparison with, with Web of Science uh, is really at the journal level. So uh, we have uh, entries that represent the metadata about journals, uh, and there are Rich, rich and, and well articulated compared to what exists uh, in uh, um, Web of Knowledge, which also by itself, uh, I should stress, a very curated database of journals. Uh, there are millions of periodicals and, and serials that are not included in, in, in Web of Knowledge, Web of Science. Um, so hopefully that clarifies the scope of, yep. Any other questions? I don't see any hands in the room, anyone? Anything else on IRC? Uh, OK. I'll do a little dance <laughs> while everyone's catching up. <laughs> it's hard to dance without music. Um, Anne Gomez. You can just use this mic. Great. Hi. Um, Catherine, I guess this is a question for you. So. I'm wondering, as we're talking about this being a transition year and being a time to kind of um, refocus and get ready for this plan that's coming, I'm seeing, I, I've been kind of running into a little bit of a tension between that and the ask for growth. And I'm wondering if you can just kind of speak to how you're thinking about that, because it's a little bit hard to say, okay, then you know our teams are really gonna be focused on preparing and maybe things that I would imagine being sunsetting and cleaning up our processes while also looking for these big KPIs. Um, so I think there's two different ways of thinking about growth. One is the growth, which I'm sure you saw the, or that has rollers on it, doesn't it? Okay. Um, <laughs> that's all right. Thank you. Um, thanks for having my back. No cool. Um, one of, one is the board statement on investing in the organization, which was around growing the amount of resources, whether staff or budget, that is available to the organization for our future. And if you look at the way we're thinking about growth in that sense, what we're really trying to do is say, where are the places that have been chronically under-resourced to date, and how do we make sure that they have the resources that they need in order to be a little bit less chronically under-resourced? And so the very first thing that we saw in this was additional capacity in the SRE team, formerly known as Ops. Um, because that's a team that was chronically under-resourced and needed more capacity. And so there's growth in that sense. And so you know, we haven't gotten to the place where we've got a rationalized, finalized annual plan yet. But you know, I think we are going to see additional growth in some sort of core areas that historically we've wanted to do work on and just haven't had the capacity to do, or areas in which we have had one person doing three people's jobs. Um, we want this to be a saner place to work for people. And so that's kind of the priority there. Now, Growth in terms of KPIs, you know, I'll be honest with you, I think we should have KPIs every year. 
whether it's a transition year or not. I think that one of the things that we as an organization need to be doing is holding ourselves, like, is finding ways of measuring if our work is effective so that we can then hold ourselves accountable to that work. Um, and then we can change or discontinue or move in a different direction or iterate if that work itself is proving not to be effective. And so we're encouraging folks to set KPIs, not necessarily because we think we're gonna hit all of them out of the park this first time round, but because it gives us a baseline for us to experiment around what it is that we should be doing um, in order to just be good at things like increasing our contributors. I think we talked about this a little bit at all hands, but I think there's an assumption that this is the work that we do every single year. But if you actually go back and look at our annual plans, and if you look at the work that we've done and our ability to measure against whether we've done that work, it'd be really hard to demonstrate that we have in fact been growing contributors or that we have in fact been increasing reach. And yet, I think that that's implicit in what our responsibility is as the Wikimedia Foundation to actually do. Um, so we're encouraging people to set KPIs, not necessarily because we expect everybody to reach all of them. They're really meant to be sort of a, a tool to say, hey, are we doing this work? You know, how successful, you know, do we make it 30% of the way? Do we make it 80% of the way? You know, those are indicators in and of themselves. Did we make it 100% of the way or 150? And did we actually sandbag and didn't realize that we could be more successful than we thought? Um, in order for us to start to be just more accountable to ourselves and more accountable to our communities as to whether we're making progress here. And because it's come up in a couple conversations, I just want to be really clear. If folks, if we set these goals and we don't make them, that that's a learning process in and of itself, and that's okay. There's not That's not a punitive outcome, or that's not going to result in a punitive outcome. It's just a way for us to evaluate what's working and what's not, and then think about how we evolve our programmatic efforts towards what can work. I don't know if that answers your question. Maybe. Gives you additional perspective, perhaps. Yeah, yeah that's OK. So I think for me, the thing that gets a little bit trickier on this is the language. And maybe this is this is my different experience from yours, but the language between KPIs versus targets or goals, right? There's there's something a little bit different about kind of like performance indicators as in terms of like a, a business performance versus like things that we're using for team reflection and team uh, goals and, and goal setting. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. That's also a super cool necklace. Um, <laughs> it's a dinosaur. I don't know if folks can see that. Um, that's a good point. Uh, I don't have an answer for you right now because I would actually want to take a look at the specific language in the annual planning documents in order to be able to provide more reflection on that. But I, I hear what you're saying around the targets that we set for ourselves versus this idea of like, is the organization performing at the top level? They, we will take a look at that as we get into the end. As, as we at the C team look at everything over the course of evaluating all the programs and the budget and the like, it's a good thing to keep top of mind. Thank you. Any other questions? Not on IRC. I don't see any in the room. How are we doing on time? I can't see a clock. Yeah? OK. So now it's time for Wiki Love, where we express our thanks and what? Oh, clicker. Where did the clicker go? Ah, let's see, Wiki Love. Okay, looks like we have Danny to express some Wiki Love. Hi, yay. Uh, hi, for just anybody who doesn't know me on the call or whatever, uh, I'm Danny Horn, Director of Product Management for the Contributors Team, and I only became that very recently, like less than a month ago. Um, I was the lead PM on uh, the community tech team, which runs the community wish list every year and so starts every calendar year with 10 brand new projects to investigate and then get people working on. Um, not the most awesome time for that team uh, for me to be able to, you know, to step back from that and not be doing that. Uh, and a couple of people uh, who are very special have stepped up to run that process and run that team. Trevor Bolliger, uh back there, who is uh, the product management or the product manager for the anti harassment tools team, uh, is now also uh, taking charge uh, of the community wish list as a whole. And then Naharika Kohli, over here, uh, is a developer who's been with the community tech team for a few years. Uh, and we've been working for a little while on uh, the goal that she has of becoming a product manager full-time. Uh, and 
right now, as uh, as I've been stepping back, both Trevor and Naharika have taken on the challenge of running the community tech team and doing all that investigation and getting people working on stuff. Um, they are both really remarkable for just taking that on uh, and just rocking it <laughs> so far, at least. Um, I'm so, shouldn't say so far, at least. They are rocking it, and I am super proud. Um, and I just wanted to, to recognize y'all and tell you how much I love you. That's nice. Uh, any other wiki love out there to be expressed? Here comes Greg. Hi. Um, so annual planning is happening. People have talked about it a few times. It's kind of a stressful time. It's kind of a confusing time, especially for people trying to do all the work. And that means everybody. So I just want to thank uh, Joel and Deb for all the um, support and clarity that they've given the technology team because in past years it's been I don't want to curse um, <laughs> bad <laughs> um, confusing but this year it's been bad and confusing but in new and different ways and and um, I think they're helping so thank you a lot for those two anything else um, I did see a question. No? Okay, answered. Any other wiki love to express here? Okay. So I think we may, unless anyone stops me, conclude our meeting for the day. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.